Hello everyone, uh, my name is Vinay and I'm an engineer on the Azure SDK for Java team. Uh, welcome to this uh, presentation on pluggable HTTP clients in Azure SDK for Java. Uh, today we will explore how to enhance the customization and flexibility in our Java applications using these pluggable HTTP clients. So let's start with a quick overview here. Uh, the Azure SDK for Java provides you with a set of libraries which allow you to interact with Azure services and they massively simplify uh, the process of building cloud-based applications on your end. And the fun part is that the HTTP clients play a very crucial role in interacting with Azure services and sending them the requests as part of this process. So the objective of this presentation and video today is to learn the concept of pluggable HTTP clients and how uh, flexible and the customization they provide you, the developers, when building the cloud-based applications using Azure SDK for Java. Okay, so let, now let's define what are pluggable HTTP clients. The, uh, these are modular components which allow you to select uh, from the HTTP client implementations offered by the Azure SDK for Java. So you can think of them like, uh, you can think of the SDK as like a brand new car here and uh, the HTTP clients as the wheels of it. So you got the car uh, with default set of good wheels and now but you may want to change the wheels based on the season or based on your preference of the alloy wheels, depending on the requirements which you have in your mind. Similarly, the Azure SDK for Java offers you these pluggable HTTP clients, which uh, you can select based on the specific requirements of your project and the application you're building. Uh, so for example, uh, we by default offer you the NetEase HTTP client baked into the Java client libraries. So if you're looking to use NetEase HTTP client, you don't need to do anything else. But if you're looking to switch to OK HTTP, you can do so using the pluggable HTTP clients, uh, which we offer. And we also offer Vortex and native uh, Java uh, HTTP clients in beta state only right now, and they will be generally available soon in future. So stay tuned for that. Uh, further, uh, if you want to be really adventurous, you can even implement your own HTTP client. It's sort of like inventing your own wheels and it's a very advanced scenario, so I would not recommend you to that, but uh, it's available as a support if you want to do that. So moving on to the next slide. The benefits, uh, what benefits do the pluggable HTTP clients offer you? So the key one, in my opinion, is the customization on which it offers you on your end to select the uh, right HTTP client which fits the needs of your application infrastructure and security. Uh, so by default, as I previously mentioned, the NetEase HTTP client is already baked in. Uh, it uh, One of the key advantages of NetEase HTTP client from general usage and patterns which we have seen is the high performance asynchronous networking. It's very famous uh, for use cases in uh, building high performance applications where you're looking to build, uh, uh, where, where the requirement is for high throughput and low latency and you're looking to build, like, for example, real time applications of financial trading platforms, or, or your application runs within large scale distributed systems. It's really efficient in uh, doing those uh, asynchronous uh, multiple requests at the same time uh, when it comes to networking. Uh, similarly, you can switch to OK HTTP. OK HTTP from uh, general uh, pattern, which we have seen is very uh, widely adopted in the mobile space, especially Android. And uh, it's very good when you're looking for like balanced performance overall and uh, also uh, basic HTTP networking use cases. So it gets the job done in, uh, in, a, in a very balanced manner overall. So depending on the use case, you can choose one over the other. Moving on to the next part where we will learn about how to configure the pluggable HTTP client. So it's uh, usually a one-step process where you just add the dependency in your POM file or the Gradle file of your application that you're building. Uh, and Netty, since it's already added by default, you don't need to do anything there. But if you're looking to switch to OK HTTP, you'll need to add that dependency into your POM file. And later on, we'll see an example of it as well as we move on. Uh, and the other option is to directly set the HTTP client in your client builder after you've added the dependency in the previous step. This is only required if you have multiple HTTP client dependencies already present in your POM file and you haven't exploded the NETI dependency by default, which is already there. So it, this step is optional, but it's needed when you have multiple dependencies in your class patch. And we'll see an example of this step as well moving forward. Uh, so let's jump on to the next part. 
So here uh, we'll now dive into an example where we'll be using the OKS HTTP client uh, using these two steps. So here we have a very basic, simple Java app which uh, has a POM Maven build and there's a POM file here which you can see. So by default, I've already added uh, these two dependencies in my POM file. Uh, which is Azure Identity. Azure Identity is needed for us to authenticate with the Azure services. And here, the second dependency which I have is Key Vault uh, Secrets. So this will allow me to interact with the Azure Key Vault service uh, and store my secrets in that service uh, in this demo. So now, by default, all you need is these two dependencies for when interacting with Azure Key Vault. Uh, or able to be able to authenticate against it and use it in, in your cloud-based application. So, uh, and in this setup, it is automatically bringing in the netty dependency as part of it. So for example, if you look into the POM file of Key Vault Secrets client library, it has this dependency of Azure Core HTTP netty uh, added in by, uh, by default. And this will add this netty client to the class path and automatically, and the Azure core here will automatically pick it up to send the HTTP request to Azure services. So you don't need to do anything else if you're looking to use Netty client. So now let's say if you were to use, uh, wanting to use okay, HTTP client, you'll need to add that dependency in your application form file here. Let me add, so now I'm adding that dependency here. So the group ID is com.azure and the artifact ID is Azure Core HTTP. Okay, HTTP, the first one here. But just to give you more context, Netty, JDK, HTTP client and Vortex, uh, as I mentioned, are also available. These two are in beta state only and not generally available as a stable package yet. But these two are generally available and are stable uh, there. So you can use any of these two in your production apps as of today. So I'll go ahead and select the OK HTTP here. And I'll set, select the latest version available, which is 1.12.0. So when you're using this, make sure you get the latest version checked from the Maven uh, and select that one. So this adds OKCTP to the class path. So now in this state, there are two, so netty dependencies coming in from Azure Identity and Key Vault Secrets here. And you have also added OKCTP. So to make sure there's only one HTTP client dependency in the class path, we will go ahead and exclude the netty dependency from coming in from these two packages here. So I'm adding the group ID here and the artifact ID. So this excludes the netty client coming in from the key vault secrets dependency. And similarly, I'll go ahead and I'll do that here as well for identity since Azure Identity Client Library also uses netty client by default. So now this sets your application up to use the OK HTTP client uh, to wire it up automatically from the class path into Azure Core and to use this uh, HTTP package when interacting with uh, Azure Key Vault service in this demo. Uh, so in this demo app, if you look at the code here, I have a very basic secret client setup from the Key Vault secrets package. Uh, it, it is picking up the vault URL from the environment variable and I'm using the Azure Identity's default Azure credential to uh, as authentication mechanism. And this will build a client for us. And then in the next step here, we use this client to set the secret um, and uh, just print out the secret information. So it's setting a dummy secret here, which has the name of my secret and the value of my password. Uh, so, Given now you have wired in the OK HTTP from the POM file configuration already, it will use that to connect to the Azure Key Vault and create the secret behind the scenes. So if you look at the stack trace here, Okay, I'm just going to give it to, and there you go. 
All right. So in the stack trace, you can see here that the secret was created with the value my password. And in the authentication layer, we were able to pick up Azure CLI -like credential from the default Azure credential chain. This is another topic. And if you are interested in learning more about how this authentication works, do let us know. We will definitely make another video on this. And now coming to the second part, where let's say hypothetically, you didn't want to go through this process of excluding the native dependency. and you just want to add the OKS HTTP directly and then have a more firmer control in your app where you select the client directly on in the code flow. So let me show you an example on how to do that and how to configure OKS HTTP directly in your code setup when you have multiple HTTP client dependencies coming into your app through the POM file. So we'll go ahead and uh, set up the OKSTTD OK client. So here I constructed the OKSTTD OK client using the builder pattern, which is coming in from the Azure core HTTP package. So here we have constructed the client. Now next step here is to wire this OKS OK HTTP client into the service SDK client, which is Azure Keyword Secrets here. So this thing gets the job done. Uh, and now since there are two layers here, one is authentication and one is the service client. So you can even, if you would like to use OKS OK HTTP client in the authentication layer as well, which is the default Azure credential, you can even go ahead and pass the same instance, which will be shared between the two clients here. So now both the authentication layer and the HTTP and the Azure Keyword Secrets uh, service client will use the OK HTTP client to send their requests. Uh, so now this gives you more, more form control uh, over selecting which uh, client you would like to use. And if I go ahead and run, so you can see that authentication was attempted and we were able to fetch successfully fetch a token, a bearer token here using the CLI credential underneath. And then we were able to use that token to create the secret with the value my password in the Azure keyword. So this uh, is basically an example of uh, getting your OKS OK HTTP client wired in uh, into your app. If you would want to move away from the default NETI client, which is already baked into these uh, SDKs. So next we move on to another example, which is about using a custom NETI HTTP client. Um, so let me now, I'll go back to my demo app again to show you guys the demo for this setup. <laughs> So in the NETI HTTP client, uh, as I previously mentioned, it's already baked in by default. You don't need to do anything if you don't want to customize it. But here in this scenario, we are uh, going to go over us in a situation where you want to customize it uh, for your needs, uh, performance needs maybe, or uh, latency, or you want to minimize the latency, uh, depending on the application you're building. So here in this uh, code sample, I'm setting up the NETI HTTP client here using the async build, uh, using the builder pattern offered by the Azure Core HTTP NETI package. And here I'm setting the event loop group to use four threads. Uh, I'm setting up a write timeout, a response timeout. So this level of customization is of offered by the NETI HTTP client uh, to up to to give you firmer control to optimize the performance of your application. Uh, so for example, if you're building a high performance app, you want uh, multiple async requests to flow through at the same time, you can use a higher number of threads to do that. Uh, if you want to, let's say you're building a 
real time application for example a financial trading platform you and you want and it's crucial for you to minimize the latency you can and you can have a firm control over the timeouts so so that the latency is minimized using these two areas uh, so depending on the use case you can customize the client uh, and similarly you can do uh, equivalent or other customization on the OKS HTTP client as well which is offered by it uh, and then set that client directly onto the secret client here as we are doing it in line 28 and then also uh, she would like to use the same setup for the authentication you can set it up on the default Azure credential builder as well here on line 27 this will get your client set up for to authenticate to authenticate and work with the azure key vault secret service and on line 31 here we set the secret again as the same pattern from the previous demo and if i'll go ahead and run this in this instance we are using the netty client <laughs> To, so now you can see in the logs that the authentication happened and CLI credential returned token and we were able to set the secret. And if you scroll up, you can see in the first line that Netty utility was invoked and it was picked up the Netty package basically. Okay, so now in which cases would you, uh, we, we would like to use Netty HTTP client? It's a very good, based on what we have seen, general patterns, uh, is, it's very good for high throughput and low latency scenarios. It's uh, it excels very well in non-blocking async operations, so it's pretty good for real-time build when building real-time applications uh, in distributed systems. Uh, so it's overall it's a it's a it's a very balanced client and uh, known for its performance in async uh, operations. Um, so and gets the job done in most of the scenarios. That's why we have it as a default baked in HTTP client. Um, but if you would like to switch to OK HTTP client, that's fair as well. It offers good balanced performance overall, and it's very suitable for um, a straightforward HTTP operations uh, to the and making the rest API calls. And it's the one of the good parts. It it's, uh, requires very minimal setup, and it's very quick, easy, and quick to set it up. So depending on your use case, you can go with one or the other. But these are just uh, the patterns which we have seen based on uh, the usage in the community and uh, based on the usage within our team as well. Okay. So to, to wrap this up and include this plug by the HTTP clients, as you saw, offer you the customization and flexibility to choose the most appropriate HTTP client based on your needs of the application project infrastructure security, whichever is a higher priority for you. And you can get more, and more information on these below links, uh, especially on the technical nuances, the more deep and do a more deeper dive on the customization which you can do with these clients based on your requirements. So definitely check these links out for more information. And last but not the least, stay in touch with us, reach out to us on GitHub, uh, Platform X or Stack Overflow. GitHub uh, is where, GitHub is the place where most of the devs reach out to us uh, regarding queries or technical issues they run into on our team assist them uh, in getting around the uh, issues which they're running into their apps. We are very responsive and will be happy to help you out uh, as you need them. But definitely any of these platforms reach out to us uh, as it suits you uh, and we'll, we are able to help you out and get you uh, building great applications with uh, Azure using Java. And yeah, thanks for watching this presentation video uh, and do like and subscribe before you leave if you like the content. Uh, and I have a good day ahead.